Hey, my community, Jeff back again. Time for another one of my Sunday uh, A to Z's of Christian rock. Christian rock, Christian hard rock, Christian metal. Everything on the harder edge of Christian music. Ignoring, in this time, uh, pop and generic, uh, you know, radio-friendly type rock. Sticking with a little bit of the heavier stuff. Um, we are up to E now. However, in pulling the E's, I found that there's really not a lot of E's on vinyl. There's quite a few E bands but not on vinyl. So I'm also including F. So between E and F, we've got a decent selection here that are available on vinyl. I am limiting only to vinyl and I'm not pulling all the CDs. So um, again, just uh, something I started to have fun with to introduce people to some of the uh, various harder edged Christian bands that are or were available on vinyl at one time or another. Let's get right started into this. Uh, East West, The Light in Guinevere's Garden. East West, um, I think they're a California band. Anyway, they uh, knew metalish alternative a little bit on the just during the grunge era but uh kind of the new metal type feel a little hard i don't know a little punkish at times um yeah great stuff um they have a couple albums out this is in my opinion too it's one of the best ones um this one and the one that followed i think would love to see that on vinyl too their earlier stuff's a little different i have i think those were only on cassette so this was released a while back uh and it even came with the cd version of it too remastered for vinyl great stuff emerald arm for battle now this was one of the only calif only christian bands back in the 80s that was considered by most of us to be, you know, your typical kind of an unsigned band. They actually released an album on vinyl. Back in the day, most Christian rock bands were cassettes. They did custom cassettes, high quality custom cassettes, but they were still independent custom cassettes. But this is a band that caught me off guard because here they have a vinyl record and they're pretty much you know unsigned they're not a, one of the bigger name bands so from the get-go you know they come out of the gate just screaming so that's very hard to find very expensive if you find a copy i should have never sold my copy way back in the day when vinyl went out of being in 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 sync with everything but um so yeah so it was repressed by a you know a non-christian label no remorse records repressed this over in greece uh, a couple years ago and um was so thrilled to have that. They put it on CD and on vinyl, and that was great. So, uh, yeah, great stuff. This is uh, Roger Dale Martin, uh, the bass player on here. Of course, later went on to do Vengeance Rising. But, um, yeah, great stuff, great stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm even I'm, I'm friends with some of these guys on Facebook even to this day. They're still out there beating things around. Um, not as a band, Emerald, but, you know, still great stuff. So there you go, Emerald, recent reissue. Jimmy Brown's Eraserhead. Is it a Jimmy Brown solo album? Is it a band called Eraserhead? I follow it as Eraserhead and not, I don't know if it, yeah, because it's labeled, you know, Eraserhead is like the band name. So that's what we're calling it. Jimmy Brown, of course, from Deliverance, vocalist, guitarist. Actually, pretty much the whole band is Deliverance. <laughs> um, Manny Morales, uh, John Knox, and Jimmy Brown. So it's, they've all been in Deliverance. Side project, totally non-heavy Deliverance type stuff. But, um, you know, Jimmy has done a lot of stuff, which, you know, his love of people like David Bowie and, and, and songs, bands of that nature come through on projects like this. And so this is the non-deliverance side of Jimmy's stuff. So now he's got Novella, which is, I guess, kind of similar. It's his, again, non-heavier stuff, but still great stuff. So that came out a couple years ago. World Record by Eternal Wright. One of the, uh, this would be, you know, people always say, oh, they're the uh, poison of Christian rock because they were total glam, total makeup and glam and everything. Great stuff, one and done. I had cassettes by them back in the day that were just great demos type, you know, custom released, decent quality cassettes. Um, and then they finally, they got signed to like Pure Metal, put out one record and, and then disappeared. So um, great band, great music and just fun stuff. One and done though. All right, Faith Factor Against a Darkened Sky. This was recently reissued on, on, what was it, Alone Records? Yeah, Alone Records overseas, uh, just last year, I believe. And uh, yeah, it was great. I don't know why they chose this band, but they put out a lot of obscure stuff. In this case, they chose 
you know, a Christian metal band. Um, you know, kind of the U.S. power type metal, Queen's Reiki at times, uh, higher range vocals, things along that line. Um, but was glad to see this on vinyl. They also did Jacob's Dream and, and some other stuff. Oracle. Yeah, great stuff. So, anyway, thank you Alone Records for some of these classics. All right, Fear Not. Absolutely one of my favorite anthem rock bands. Um, just everything about this album was just, and just is still one of my favorites. So, anthem -y, your 80s, 90s anthem rock, uh, hard rock um, of that day's metal, in my opinion. So, this was reissued, slightly new cover artwork reissued, and the band actually got back together and have recorded a couple new albums. And this is uh, Field of Sorrows is Field of Sorrow. Fields of Sorrow, we put the right in, S in there, um, is one of those that has been reissued on vinyl. So um, the band is still somewhat active. Now I say I would say they changed singers, which they did, but Larry, the singer from the first album, he's still in the band. He's just not doing the lead singers, lead vocals. And so a uh, different flair, kind of a modernized sound, um, but still absolutely great stuff. Probably can still get this if you're interested. Some of these are pretty limited. All right, these next two came out while I was in South Carolina. I don't believe I ever showed them in a video. Um, they were reissues, but uh, Final Lax. Final Lax was a California band. They um, did a couple albums under Final Lax. Later, they changed the names to uh, Titanic and did a couple albums. And I say they, it's Bill, Bill on guitar and um, whatever name he's going by, Keith, Simon, uh, whatever, on vocals. Um, couple of the guys, you know, uh, Keith Bean from Holy Right, that classic album from the 80s, and then he did Final Axe, and all of that. So, and then the interesting connection there, which I've said before in many videos ago, but the magazine that I did myself, the fanzine I did on Christian music back in the late 80s, the logo for my magazine for issues 2, 3, and 4 the logo was created by singer Keith Miles from this band. I was in touch with him back in the Holy Right days. He was a graphic designer on the side, and he made a logo for my magazine. So, yeah, great stuff. Um, and like I say, Keith and them, they did this. Keith and Bill did this, and then later they disappeared. They came back as uh, Titanic. Those albums have been reissued with uh, Robert Sweet on drums. These have Robert Sweet on drums. I went back because I guess back in the day they, some of these had drum uh, machines or they didn't have anyway they up upgraded stuff first time on vinyl final acts actually the the beyond hell's gate final acts has been on vinyl i don't know what label did it some small little label has a black and white cartoon comic book looking cover um would love to get that copy because that is the original mix this is the re redone mix um, with robert sweet on drums so it's not the original uh, this, I have CDs of both the original and the upgraded one. And I got so used, I love these albums back in the day, and I got, it was just so ingrained to me, the original drums, that when they did the Robert Sweet drums, it was so different for me. It just didn't feel right. So, I mean, it's great, but, you know, when you're used to something that you grew up with, it was tough to get used to. Um, so now those versions have been put on vinyl. Can't say I wouldn't mind having some, of the originals just whatever but we got the cds so great stuff so yeah those came out recently and i don't think i had mentioned them in a previous video yet so uh, early in the days when the christian labels like rocks and gird and all them and were, were getting into vinyl they were doing these smaller things now they have limited run and various uh, other things but they did you know rocks records underground series number nine final prophecy early thrashy death metal type stuff just gnarly vocals um, things along that line and it had a couple has a bonus track on the vinyl came with the CD uh, or has a CD edition that has even a couple of other bonus tracks but I was grabbing all of them back in the day from the underground series all right a classic from the 80s that for some reason is never ever allowed to be reissued rock of offense first strike one of the early hard rocking bands 84 so they these guys were coming out around the time striper was just breaking and um Pretty much straight up hard rock. Great, great album that we've loved back in the day. Many a label have tried to reissue this, but for some reason the band will not allow it. Um, Mike Rowe of 77's had his hand in this, I think, producing and helping with that. So um, that was a neat connection. 
But uh, yeah, I don't know. For some reason, they won't let that get reissued. Force 3, Warriors of Light. Force 3 has, uh, what's his name, Charlie on um, vocals. Charlie was the singer, guitar player for 1,000. Uh, 1,000, yeah, let's give him another zero. 100% proof. I have the second 100% proof album. I really want to get the first 100% proof album. I'd really love to see both 100% proof albums and their EP single thingy reissued. But um, the uh, I do have their second album, Power and Glory. I really want their first album. 100% Proof were just a uh, English rock band that a lot of people compared, at least, you know, the vocally and everything, a little bit to the Bon Scott era, kind of a, just a rock and roll ACDC type thing. Anyway, 100% Proof dissipated. Charlie went on to do this one album, uh, and it was put on Pure Metal Records and released back in the day. And uh, yeah, it's okay. It's pretty cool. I think 100% Proof were a little bit funner, <laughs> but great stuff. Great stuff nonetheless. All right, for today, wait. The only one I have by them on vinyl, new uh, heart, um, metalcore, metalcore band. I would say new metal, but no, metalcore band. One of the few that I really like, Denim, Sleeping Giant, some other bands along this line that I really like on the aggressive, aggressive side. Um, for the longest time, I think that, well, I think their early stuff might, uh, I don't know. There were some vinyl re releases of their first couple albums, which are really hard to find. But just about a week ago, and I forget where it was, might have been on the label, I saw where one of the previous albums of this is getting reissued on vinyl. So I'm going to jump on that. I'm hoping that's going to start a trend. Because before this album, I think this was, this was a, wasn't this the last album by the band? A couple of the guys went on to do something else, but I believe this was the last album. But there's about four or five albums prior to this. Love to see them put those in. At least, so one, at least one of them is going to come out on vinyl. And I'm hoping they reissue the earlier stuff. Because I got into them around the second album. And uh, just fell in love with them. Second album and on. Great stuff. And then, okay. Now we're at the end. Frost Like Ashes. A uh, band that started in, like, uh, was in Missouri in the U.S. Back in, like, 2001. They did some stuff. Dissipated. Disappeared. Came back, like, ten years later. And, um... Started again. I think they're in like North Dakota now. Blackened death metal band. I, I I don't you know. Obviously, it's not my full style. But at some point, I heard some stuff by them that was palatable enough for me to say, you know, I kind of dig that. When I feel like that kind of style, this is one of my go-to bands. And then when they started, you know, releasing some other stuff on vinyl, I'm like, well, I've, I've got to get on board. I also have a seven-inch that I didn't pull. Seven-inch single. But this is um Tofit Tof Tofit, which was I guess recently. One of the recent, both of these are kind of recent, but Black and Death Metal, Fellowship of Suffering. The cassette, the CD version of this has like five songs. The vinyl has eight, so there's three other songs on here. So that was really cool. I always love it when the vinyl gets a bonus um, over the even the CD. You can see they got the Death Metal, if you can see that. They got the whole makeup thing going at times too. So Black and Death Type Metal. This was a pretty one, too, because it's multicolor split there. I like that. Nice. All right, there you go. Frost Like Ashes is Frost Like Ashes last in the Fs. That's it. E and F. We'll move on to G next time. Thanks for watching. Rock on and rock hard.